Hey guys, so today we're going to be going through um, work, a workaround for an issue that, that I've come across with self-hosted versions of N8N. So what we can see here is I've just got a video of when I was trying to extract some data from a file using um, just the, the native extract from file node in N8N resulting in the local instance crashing. So this is a known issue that is being worked on. So fingers crossed we can work through this or it can be resolved fairly quickly. Um, but for obviously for the time being, we want to have the ability to extract data from a PDF to then be able to be used by an LLM or um, integrated into things like Google Sheets. So what I'm going to do is just start off by working through just a really basic workflow and explaining to you how each part of it works. And then what we'll do is we'll build it together. So essentially all that I'm doing is downloading a file from Google Drive, um, uploading it to a platform called Llama Cloud where the information will be basically passed and processed in a way that can be used easily by an LLM. Um, so first thing is we'll just run through executing the workflow so we can see it's downloading here. And then once it's done, it's going to upload that file to Llama Cloud. Um, it's going to then wait to just give it a moment to basically process the document and do what it needs to do. Then what we're going to do is then check the status of the file to make sure or the um, check the status of the extraction to make sure that it's been passed properly and that it's completed. And then we're going to go through an if node to check whether or not that has worked properly. If it has, it will continue on. If it hasn't, it will then come through another wait node to just give it a little bit more time. And then once we've confirmed that it's successful, we'll extract or, or download the information so that it can be used by our AI agent here. So what we can see at the end here is that um, we did get an, actually get an error because I do just need to change the prompt or the user message here to this. Um, so that it knows what it's looking for. Um, so in terms of each one of these steps here, um, we've basically just got the information that we're sending via the HTTP request. We can see the status here is pending. We then have our wait node. Um, then we have our check file. We can see it was successful. Um, so then it's then going to pass through the true branch. If I was to say get rid of this node here, and we were to just execute the workflow again, what we would see is that there's going to be no time for waiting. Um, so it's going to check the status of the file and it's going to actually show that it's not ready. So we can see pending. Um, so then it's going to go down the false branch of that, that if node before then coming back to be um, downloaded and then used by our LLM. While that's waiting, what I'll just quickly show you is just a really basic prompt that I set up for it. So we can see that the user message is json.data, so the, the data coming from um, Llama Cloud. And then what we can see here is just a really basic one. I'm just asking it to extract some information um, by supplier that we could then use further down the line to in something like Google Sheets. Um, so that should almost be done now because I've got a one minute wait on there. Um, it's been going for 40 seconds. Um, but essentially what we'll do is we'll run through step by step how you can set this up. Hopefully in the future, uh, the issues with the native node will be fixed and we don't need to do this. But for the time being, um, this is probably the best workaround. And I've found Llama Cloud is the best in terms of the fact that it, it's free. Um, you don't have to put in any credit card details or anything like that. Um, and yeah, it has pretty generous limits for its free plan. So you shouldn't really ever run into any bottlenecks. So what we can see here now is that it has extracted the data for us. Um, obviously we can prompt it further or add in some additional steps to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, but what you can see is it has worked here because if we come to our file here and we look at this one here, for example, we can see uh, the supplier Alpha Inc, um, the product name Unit J and the unit sold 220. And then if we come back to here, what we can see is supplier name, product name, unit J, and then unit sold 220. So that's um, that's extracted that information. So what we'll do is we'll get into how we build this step by step. So what the first thing we need to do is get our Google Drive node um, so we can basically get our file ready to be uploaded to Llama Cloud. So what we'll do is we'll just grab our Google Drive node and then we're going to download a file and then we're going to select our file. So I've just named this one um, Llama Pass PDF Example. And then we can execute this to make sure that it's all good to go. If you're unsure about the credential side of things, I do have a video coming very shortly. I'm a bit of a credential masterclass for a lot of the really popular 
um, nodes that, that people do use in N8N, so keep an eye out for that one. So now we can see that our file's downloaded, so we can move on to our next step, which is our HTTP request. So because we're going to be uploading this information to Llama Cloud, the first thing we want to do is change the method from get to post. And then we need to grab a few more details here. So the first thing that we do need to grab is um, our URL. Um, so the endpoint in terms of where we're setting it, we need to set up our authentication and then a few other parameters within the headers and the body as well. So what we're going to do first is navigate to Llama Cloud and I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. Um, if you don't have an account, you'll need to create one. But as I mentioned before, it is free. Um, I've already got one. So I'll just quickly log into, into that. And then what we can see is that um, we're at our dashboard here. So in order to get our API key um, to set up our authentication, which we'll do first, we want to come down to the left side here to API keys. You can see I've got a couple here um, just from other tests. So I'm going to generate a new one and I'll just call this demo and then I'll create my secret key. It will generate it for us and then we just click copy. So once you quit out of this, uh, you will lose the key. So just make sure that you um, save it somewhere first. So then we can come back to N8N and we can go to authentication. We're going to go to generic uh, credential type. We're going to go uh, generic auth type and then we're going to go to a header auth and what we need to do is just create a new credential. So in here we'll just name it um, Llama Demo and the name for this one is going to be authorization and then the value here is going to be bearer space your API key. So if you just come over to expression you can actually see it and just double check you've set it up all correctly and what I'll do is I'll show you where to find this information in the API documentation as well. So we'll click save on that and now our authentication is all good to go. So what we'll do is next we'll come back to Llama Cloud and we're going to go down to documentation. So within the documentation we want to just come over to pass and then we want to go down to getting started or get started sorry. Once we're here, we can see the different ways that you can interact with it. We're going to be using API, um, so we want to just make sure that we're using the right information. So what we can see here in terms of uploading a file to start passing is that we have this, this link here. So what we'll do is we'll copy this here because that's going to be our API endpoint. And we'll just paste that in there. So there's a few more little things that we do need to set up, um, which we'll work through each of those. And the first thing that we're going to do is um, once, we, once we have now our credentials set up, we have our endpoint, um, we're going to send over a little bit more information. So we're going to expand the headers option here. And if we come back to our documentation, we can see there's a few things that we need to set up. So we've got this here. So accept application slash JSON. And then we've got um, content type multi-part slash form data. And then we've obviously set up um, our authentication here as well. So what we'll do is we'll put in here, we'll go, um, so we've got using the field below, the name of this header that we're going to be sending over is just going to be accept and then the value, oops, application slash JSON. Um, we're going to add another parameter here as well and we're going to, oops, sorry, not here, we're going to send this under the body. Um, so for the content type, we're going to do form data. The parameter type um, is going to be an N8N binary file. So the reason why we're doing that is because we are sending a binary file here. So for the name, it's just whatever you want the name of the file to be. So you can just make a file. And then for the input data field name, um, we're going to put data because that's essentially the name of this piece of binary information uh, that we're sending over. So now that we've set those up, we should be good to go. And what we'll do is we'll click execute step. Cool. So we can see that it has sent over and the status is currently pending. So next thing we'll do is we'll add a wait node. Um, as I mentioned before, you do need to give it a little bit of time just to basically work through what it needs to do. Um, and that just allows it to make sure that it doesn't error while we're working through this. 
So we can set it to, I would say, just recommend 30 seconds. Um, but because of the amount of time that I'm, I guess, taking to talk through this, we can probably just set it to something a little bit shorter, like one second for the moment, but we'll come back and change that a little bit later. So once we've worked through this um, wait node here, we can then set up our next HTTP request. So this one is just going to be checking the status of our file. And unlike the last one that was a post request, we're gonna leave this at get because we're getting the status of this information. With our authentication, we can come down again to generic and go to header and just use our one from before. So we've got our Llama demo from before. And next thing we need to grab is our URL. So if we come back to the documentation, we can see the next step here, check the status of our job, and we're gonna use this here. So we'll copy that, paste it back into our URL here. And there is one thing that we do need to change though. So we've got our job ID. So this is a placeholder. Um, we need to replace it with our actual ID, which we can find over here in the schema. Um, first thing we wanna do before that is change this to an expression. We can delete this and we can add this in here. So that will just mean that regardless of how many jobs you're running, it will know the ID. Um, you don't have to manually come in and change it. Whereas if you had this as, as fixed, um, you would have to manually ch uh, type in or plug in those numbers there. So we'll leave that as an expression. So there is a little bit more information that we do need to send via headers as well. So we'll expand that one. We come back to the documentation, we can see that we need to add in this here. So the accept application slash JSON again, so we'll add that in, so accept, and then oops, application slash JSON. And what we should now be able to do is check on the status, but what we'll do is we'll just change this first to check status. It's always good to label all of your nodes just to keep things very clean and organized. So we'll check the status of this one here, which, um, because of the amount of time we've taken should be successful, which we can see, which is awesome. And then we can move on to the next step after I just rename this one. Cause again, we want to, we want to keep this consistent. So we'll go send data to Llama cloud. And we can just rename this one, um, download from drive. Cool. So next thing we're going to do is just put in our uh, fail safe. So just our if our if node to check the status. Um, so we'll change this to check job status. And what we want to be doing is checking whether this, um, this element here is coming back as successful or, um, or pending. So we'll drag this across into here it should change automatically to an expression, which is good. And we want this value here, which at the moment is success to equal success as well. So what we can see here after doing that is we've got two branches. We've got our true or I guess our success branch, and then we've got our false and our fail branch. So what we'll do is work through the false one first. And all we're going to do is just add another wait node. You might want to make that one again. 30 seconds should be fine and then just connect this back to our check job status. So if we execute this one now, what we should see is that it comes through the true branch and we can see the ID and the status and we can see through this line here being green that it's going through the true branch. So what we can do then is get our information. So we'll do another, a third and final HTTP request. And again, we're getting information, we're not posting. Um, so we will leave that as get. Um, we'll just quickly select our authentication again. And we'll get our URL. So we'll come back to the documentation and we can see the third and final step here is to copy this ID or this URL here. So once we paste it in here, we do again want to make it an expression because we have a job ID placeholder that we need to replace with the actual um, value. So again, we'll drag this over and pop it in here. And what we can see now is it's dynamically grabbing that job ID for us. We do also need to just again, send one more header. Um, so we'll just quickly set that one up. But again, from our documentation, we can see it's just the accept application um, JSON. 
Um, so what we'll do is just type in accept an application slash JSON. And what we should now be able to do is execute this step. And we can see that we have our results here. So what I'll do now is I'll just pin this so that we don't have to keep rerunning it. I'll bring our AI agent over. And what we can see is we do just need to change this value here, which will, so we'll delete that. Um, so by default, the connected chat trigger will be the prompt or the user message um, because we're not using a chat trigger. We need to change it to define below. And what we can do is just drag this across. So now it knows that this is essentially what it's looking at. And then we've got our system message down here, which is providing the information on the detail of what we want it to do. We've obviously as well connected our model through um, open, open AI chat model. Um, again, as part of a credential masterclass that I'll be putting together over the next couple of days, I will have how to do all of that, but I do also have information in some of my other videos, um, particularly for this specific instance with um, connecting your um, open router credentials or your open AI credentials. Um, so just have a look back through some of my other videos and you'll find that there. And what we'll do is we'll just execute this step. So again, just while that's working through it, we are looking for, we'll just look for one example. So Alpha Inc um, as the supplier, the product name is unit J and then the number of units sold. So what we can see here is we've got supplier, Alpha Inc, product name, unit J and then unit sold 220. So just a bit of a, a quick one there guys, but a really helpful one I find as well if you've been struggling with um, running into that error. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this in information helpful and if you do have any questions um, please feel free to reach out comment on the video let me know or if you have any any ideas or suggestions that you would like videos on happy to to put together something um, in relation to that as well and if you do need anything in terms of automated solutions um, for your business p please feel free to reach out via our website or email again both of those will be in the description and um, yeah we'll have some more content coming out soon over the next couple of days thanks guys